So there are two stories that strikes me here. One is what happened with the strike, which is now over, and the underlying business. How do you separate out those two, both with respect to the third quarter and for the year? Yeah, David, I would say third quarter was a very strong quarter. Um, the underlying business was very strong, driven primarily by North America, and where the trucks and the crossovers that we sell today have been driving the earnings power um, of the company. And uh, obviously, the strike had a significant impact. It was 52 cents for the quarter and uh, $2 in EPS for the year. But separating that out uh, and looking at the underlying performance, we remain strong. So as you say, it would have been even better but for the strike. What accounted for the success of the earnings in the third quarter? Was it product mix? Was it the trucks? Was it the SUVs, crossovers? I think it was all of those. And uh, uh, we are in the midst of our uh, full-size uh, truck launch, and the light duties have already been launched, and the heavy duties were in the process of launching. And if you look at the performance since the beginning of the year, we're up eight points from a market share standpoint. And we've done that with uh, discipline and with record high transaction prices as well. And all of that is certainly helping uh, the earnings power. The crossovers are performing really well. They're up 29% year over year. And GM Financial is noteworthy as well, where we're growing that business, and it's been continuing favor continuing to contribute to the profitability of the company. Divya, you referred to North America. Let's talk about China, because GM has been historically pretty strong in China. You had a tough quarter in China. How much of that was the marketplace overall? How much was specific to GM, and what is it going to take to turn that around? China remains a volatile business, and um, um, I would say that the impact has been felt in the industry volumes and pricing pressure. And within that backdrop, uh, we saw uh, from our new launches uh, in Q3 and continuing into Q4 uh, some strength from a mixed standpoint. And um, uh, Cadillac is doing well in China as well. We're up 11 percent year over year. And uh, we've also been running the business with a lot of cost discipline. So the environment, as you point out, is volatile, but within that, we're controlling everything that we can. Okay, Divya, let's talk about the strike now and what it uh, does for General Motors, both this year, but also looking forward. With respect to this year, you had to take your, your guidance down some. Uh, how much do you really feel, believe that you're going to have headwinds because this year, because of the strike results? From a, from a guidance standpoint, uh, we rolled out a guidance in January, and if you look at the revised guidance that we're sharing today, our guidance is consistent with that, excluding the impact of the strike. So uh, we had a commitment to deliver $6.50 to $7 in January, and what we're doing today is adjusting that for $2 worth of strike impact. And um, as we go forward, uh, as we talked about earlier, what's going to uh, be relevant is the underlying uh, strength and the earnings power of the business, and that's what we're focused on as we move forward. Well, and that earnings power depends on at least two things, it strikes me. One of them is costs and margins, and the, the settlement with the UAW doesn't appear to have helped on that, but the other is flexibility in production. How did that trade-off work for General Motors in the end as it cut the deal with UAW? Yeah, as we went into the uh, uh, into this process, our focus was on uh, getting an agreement that made sense for the workers as well as the business. And we think this but this accomplishes that from a worker standpoint, uh, they share in the success of the company. And from a company standpoint, um, if we retain our flexibility, we've improved our capacity utilization. And importantly, our plan is to continue to offset the increased cost with productivity and the normal efficiencies that we would drive in the business every day. So. Uh, uh, we would characterize this as having accomplished the objectives both from the employee perspective as well as the business standpoint. I know, Divya, you have a long-term strategic plan with Mary Barra. How does this strike affect that? Uh, from what you just said, it sounds like it's basically a break-even. That is to say, you'll make up an increased cost by increased productivity, or does it actually put General Motors ahead of where it was before it went into the negotiations? Uh, David, I'd say we're executing our plan. We laid out a plan for ourselves in terms of strengthening the core business and investing in the future of mobility and making sure that we are driving an appropriate rate of return in every business that we participate in. And that's what we're doing today, and this is uh, not going to change that. We were aware of the fact that this is a cyclical business, so we do our downturn planning. We ensure that we maintain an appropriate break-even, and the focus that we have today and going forward is to maintain all of that and execute our plan. And you need that flexibility in part because of downturns, there's ups and downs in overall demand. You're also going to need it because you're going through a major transformation as the entire auto industry is into electric vehicles, for example. Does this agreement allow you the flexibility you need to make electric vehicles, which as I understand it, require far fewer workers potentially than the traditional uh, internal combustion engine vehicles? 
We are very excited about the future of electric. We believe in an all-electric future, and the investments that we've announced uh, uh, recently are a testament to that between our Orion plant and our uh, Detroit Hamtramck plant, where we've uh, talked about our battery electric trucks. And I think all of this goes towards ensuring that we're putting the building blocks in place to win in the future of electrification. And this agreement will continue to allow us to do that. So specifically, uh, this will give you enough flexibility that if you need to make adjustments for the different sort of modalities with respect to electric fuels, you'll be able to do that consistent with this agreement over the next four years. This agreement maintains our flexibility to adjust the workforce based on what's needed um, from an industry standpoint and what's the realities of the business, yes. One, one other question, because I know it's come up a lot, uh, so-called, I believe they're called transplants. They're sort of like temporary workers that come in. General Motors has been at a disadvantage to other automakers in the United States. Did that get rectified in this deal? I would say overall we have maintained our competitiveness, and I'd look at it through the lens of what I talked about earlier, uh, from a flexibility standpoint, from a capacity utilization standpoint, um, and from the first standpoint of offsetting uh, the economics through productivity and efficiency. This allows us to get back to our business plan and execute the plan that we have laid out, and that's what we're going to focus on.